This is a freestyle BMX pedal. This is also a freestyle BMX pedal. And there's a lot of similarities between these two pedals. Like the fact that they both have unsealed bearings as well as cups to hold those bearings in place within them. They both have pedal spindles and they can both be installed on the exact same freestyle BMX bikes in order to just pedal the bikes around as well as do different tricks on them. There's also a lot of differences between these two pedals. There's very obvious differences in physical design between them that you can see right now, as well as very big differences between how they're actually made. These pedals are mass produced over in Taiwan, likely using some sort of injection molding process where they're then assembled and shipped via cargo container and a cargo ship to the distributor who then will ship them to the local bike shop or mail order, which will sell them to the end user, maybe you, to put them on your bike and ride them. These pedals, they do have some pre-existing components like the spindles, bearings, and cups, but as far as the pedal bodies and caps themselves go, are designed and 3D printed by my friend Zach Gerber in Columbus, Ohio. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, visiting Zach in his lab and talking about the design process, what inspired them, how he goes through prototyping and alpha and beta testing these pedals, how you actually get the design from your computer to the 3D printer, then printing it, then taking it off of there and actually assembling these pedals after you take all the excess support material off of them. We're gonna be going over all of that today in depth and just talking about the ethics of 3D printing and the practicality of it as well. Because 3D printing is something that's existed in the BMX world for quite some time amongst hobbyists and within the industry. There are people who will design and print their own BMX parts just like Zach to ride on their bikes, as well as people who will redesign something like a peg sleeve or a hub guard for an existing part they already have to ride on their bike and replace as they need. There's also 3D printing in the industry in rapid prototyping and just being able to see a product way before you actually have it sampled and made and other avenues there as well. So I really hope you enjoy this one. It's super interesting to take a look at this process and I had a lot of fun talking with Zach about it. It's a long one, but I think it's worth the watch and uh, here pretty soon we'll actually be putting these on my bike in another video and riding them and testing them out. And then we'll have a video bike check with Zach talking about some of the different 3D printed stuff that's actually on his bike. So stay tuned and uh, I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you in Zach's lab. All right, so we're here in Zach's lab picking up the pedals and first things first, can you tell me a little bit about the pedals themselves? These aren't actually the pedals. Those are the pedals right there, but these are a finished version. If you wanna tell me a little bit about them. All right. Um... Well, this is a concept I think that, what, we're discussing it, have been around for literally since I started riding. I mean, there used to be products that you could, like, screw, you know, plastic plates or metal plates to the bottom, too. I've even seen people use, like, skateboard decks and screw those in. Um, but, yeah. The concept is to have a side of the pedal you grind on. Yep, that's basically it. Something you could just, like, grind side pedal, essentially. And, well, with my new hobby of 3d printing and learning how to do things on cad i was like yo why don't we make those so i don't know why i say we it's just me but, <laughs> but all of yeah. the people inside your head yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like dude it looks like what the hell's going on but that's yeah funny. i was just like shit let's make some uh grind side pedals this actual pair right here the green ones this is the uh alpha version um this is the beta this was the first one ever made these are the second ones ever made as far as design goes and testing and this is the third and final one that is online they're the ones that i'm riding right now as well and we're gonna make a pair of them today yeah so is there anything to say about like the concept or the design or anything like that of the pedals i mean you're using existing pedal spindles already yep these are out of animal rat trap pedals or bsd safari pedals they all have the same very thin end not like the we'll say uh what is it odyssey uh, pc pedals they have like a larger same with the old stephen hamilton pedals they have a larger uh cup inside and a larger spindle these ones actually have a thinner spindle and smaller cup sizes and bearing sizes even 
So that's what I went with because I had a bunch of rat trap pedals around. So I just designed around the spindle I had sitting around. So we're going to be taking, this is fresh off the printer. They are, you haven't taken excess material off or anything. But before we get to that point, I want to talk a little bit about actually like the design computer stuff too. So if possible, it'd be cool to take a look at like even like the file yeah, if you want to, I should, I can probably pull up uh, Fusion 360 and we can look at some of uh, the things I've been working on. These pedals, I do believe, are still on there. And then we can also go through the process of somebody who has a printer, they want to go to my Thingiverse, which is like an open source site where you can download the files. Mm -hmm. We'll go through that process because i got to print out these little things to finish the project. Yeah. So we'll show how to go online. Go to that website, go to my page, download them, upload them to the spl the Slicer app, which is like what the machine reads, and then we'll start those on this machine and then do the whole build project, essentially. Yeah, that's cool. And we will show that part now, and then we will come back for the uh, actually building them. Yeah. So be right back. So what are we looking at here? So this is the pedal that we are making, and this is the CAD rendering, the 3D uh, model, essentially, that I created. So what's it take to like create that? Uh, <laughs> a lot of hours, frustration, and a bunch of helping uh, how-to YouTube videos. <laughs> that makes sense. Because <laughs> I am not formally educated in this, but I am uh, motivated. So, yep. I feel like this gives us a nice look at it too. And then, so what program are we in right now? This is Fusion 360, uh, then, Autodesk Fusion 360, I guess you'd say. Gotcha. So what steps do you got to do to go from here to the printer then? Is okay. this where you're making it? So this is, yeah, this is um, essentially like you made your 3D model, right? Like you made your 3D model. You'd go over here and you'd save this as a mesh file. Yeah. Once it's saved as a mesh, mesh file, which is essentially your uh, extension is your .stl. Mm -hmm. Once that's an STL, that's what uh, the kind of file that I've uploaded to like the internet and stuff on my Thingiverse. So let's actually go to my Thingiverse and we're going to download that pedal that we just seen. Essentially, like we'll just do the process like if... Uh, I just got a 3D printer and I want to make that pedal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So obviously you don't have to make the 3D rendering and do all that. You can just go to uh, my Thingiverse and download it and then print it. So we'll go through those steps. This is my Thingiverse page. I think it's just Thingiverse backslash Zach Gerber. So that's my page. As you can see, here are different designs that I've created from peg sleeves to bar ends to pedals to hub guards or excuse me bottom bracket guards but this is the pedal these are the earlier versions the beta and the alpha this is the final version right here so we're going to go here this is what you would do essentially if you're you know printing it at home so from here we're going to go to things and files and we're going to download the files since we already printed them right I do need pedal caps for this, so we're gonna download pedal caps. Yeah, we could just go through this. You would, essentially, you'd have to go through this process three times then. Yeah, because yeah. here's your left version, here's your right version, and here's your pedal caps. Yeah, so we'll just do it once with the pedal cap. Yep, so I'm gonna open up pedal caps. This is uh, Ultimaker Cura. This is a slicing app. Essentially, it takes your three-dimensional image and makes it into what's called G-code, which is essentially that 3D image in layers. So what we're gonna do is obviously there's two pedals, so we gotta we gotta make two of these. All right, that's our. Uh, so are we looking at the caps. the tray right now? Yes, this is essentially the bed of the printer. This is like you can actually pick out what uh, particular printer you have, so it gives your parameters. Oh, cool. And then obviously you can see. So you know from the start that you're gonna be able to. It's gonna yep. work. And you know, you have your printer settings, you have your material settings, and then over here are all your settings for like how you're gonna print it. Okay. There's a lot of stuff to go through here and a lot of things to learn that took me uh, quite a bit of time to understand how to do this. You click slice over here. 
takes a few minutes to compute. Let's do a preview. Now you can actually see the layered image right here. And you can see, you can actually break it down into what it looks like as the machine runs and builds up each layer. Does an infill, that's what that gyroid is. See it waves through it. Mm -hmm. And then, boop, it's done. We take our micro SD card on the USB, shove that son bitch in there, <laughs> save to removable file, eject, pull it out, and let's go take it to the 3D printer. So what's crazy is like, I mean, obviously these are your pedals here. Yeah. And you can see the amount of infill. These are what's called supports. Okay. Obviously you can't have a structure floating in midair. You kind of can with printers, but not so much. Um, it's called bridging when they float them in the air. But essentially you have supports on that allow structural support as it's being printed layer by layer. Yeah. So when you're finished though, you got to break these things off of your printer and clean them all up, which involves uh, like some pliers and pulling all this shit apart and getting them clean and ready to go. Sweet, so what do we do first? First thing we do, we're gonna break them. We're gonna break them right off the thing. We're gonna break them already? <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yeah. I hope they don't break, I don't break my, I'm afraid of breaking my machine because one of the things you do to get it to stick real nice to your machine, I always use glue. This is glass, obviously. Yeah. So I use a bunch of glue to make it stick and uh, sometimes I, there's other things you can do too. They make like printer beds where you can like, they flex and everything, but you ready? Yeah. Oh my God, that seems violent. Oh yeah. This one might be. Jeez. <laughs> Dude, that seemed like. Taking them off the machine. That yeah. seemed like it was gonna break it itself. <laughs> dude, that's crazy. It's a pain in the ass, dude. So while we're taking these apart, I mean, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on. You wanna talk to, about the material a little bit? And maybe yeah. your process and like how you ended up on this material? Cause I know it's not the same as the ones like, like this. We, you started yep. with right that that is a so the material that i most common and is the most common in 3d printing is called pla mm -hmm. polylactic acid um it's pretty sick because it's not a petroleum-based plastic like uh injection molding is okay this is cool because it breaks down after like a you know 100 years or something into a liquid rather than into microplastics but yeah i started out with like just uh eson pla plus and eventually found this material right here. It's sold at Micro Center. It's called, it's Inland is the name of the uh, company. And it's called PLA Tough. Supposedly has double the impact strength. And obviously with doing grinds and stuff, you want high impact. But like, a lot of product testing, a lot of spent money. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's just how it goes, trying to figure it out. Yeah, but it's, it's a really cool, it's just a cool thing. Like you're making your own pedals. Yeah, Literally. It, you're, yeah, it's, it's fun too, just being able to like uh, put a design out that anyone anywhere can download and print from their house and then they can product test it. You know what I mean? It's cool to have like a, a community of printer friends who are like, hey, yeah, I tried it. I used this material. It didn't really work or this worked great or, you know what I mean? You get to immediately have results because you can print it in a few hours. I mean... This took two days to print both these. So it's not something super fast. Right. There are faster printers, but I'm not spending that much money. Um, so where are we at now? You got a lot of it out. I got the back section. You can see this is the original. Wow. And then we got to get, we got to get all these little supports off here. Get these off. And what's cool is too, like I take all this stuff uh, to the facility here. Um, we have a 3D printing facility in Columbus and I take all this air and they recycle it and then turn it into new filament. So that's cool too. Like it's a, it's not just like a throwaway kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that's rad. So. They, uh, is it like recycling? They'll give you some money back on it? Yeah, you get like, uh, since you bring stuff in, you get like 10% off or 20%, depending on how much you, you give them. That's awesome. So it's cool. There you go, start to see the insides a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. It's, it's pretty sweet to see the process. Yeah, I was always like tempted to just send people like this and be like, here you go. <laughs> Clean it yourself, <laughs> dude. You know, so yeah, it takes a little while. This stuff is coming apart pretty easily. Sometimes it can be a bitch and it's sometimes mildly stressful because like you're like, 
I don't want to break. Yeah, it. that's kind of scary. But I mean, you can see this stuff. Um, see how it's it's hollow. Oh yeah, yeah. Because so it's, it's, you don't want to waste material. By yep, it's trying it. to be efficient as possible. This is hollow. It's super light. This is solid, so it obviously has more of the structural integrity. Right. So, so with all of this, I mean, how did you even get into doing this? Do you want the the real answer? <laughs> Uh, you can give me whatever answer you want to give me. <laughs> like, like you, I mean, you didn't just always have a 3D printer. No, know? yeah, it was something that uh, became a hobby of mine from a YouTube video uh, from Popular Front. I seen things about the 3D printed gun community, and that's where I got into this, is because of that. Uh, Control Pew. And then did and the you guide. just, like come to the realization one day of like oh i could make bmx stuff too yeah no yeah it was essentially so what i did is okay so control pew it has a guide that talks about what machine to use all this sort of stuff but it's for firearms yeah right so i took what they do for firearms and did it for bike parts all the infill all like the plastics they use and i mean i was like if it's going to work for firearms it would work for bike stuff. Yeah. So that's essentially what I did because of the research that other individuals have done for the gun community, I used to make stuff for the bike community. That's super awesome. How long, okay, so how long would you say you had been doing 3D printing stuff before you started doing bike parts? Um, as far as like the trial and error period of like learning yeah, stuff? Yeah, from the time you first started doing it to the time you realized, oh, I could apply this to BMX. Um. So, obviously, when you first get it, you get a machine. Watch yourself. <laughs> um, obviously, when you first get the machine, learning how to set it up, level the bed, um, it, it's, a, it's a process, dude. A lot of trial and error, a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, hours of YouTube videos. Like right. A lot of how-tos, learning how to do everything. Um, it took me, like, I don't know. It, it took me, it was something I wanted to do. Like, when I first got it, I was like, yo, I want to make, like, the first thing I want to do is like peg sleeves. Yeah. Because those are like the easiest. It's a cylinder, right? Like that's a fairly simple, like learning the design. Right. So first it was mostly just like learning how to get the printer to work. So then it was like downloading all the things off of Thingiverse, all the free files, and, you know, just getting the machine to print them properly, understanding how all the settings work. Yeah. But then from there, then it was downloading CAD and then learning how to do CAD. Yeah. And I'm still extremely, like, novice at it, but much better than I first was, going from, like, doing, you know, peg sleeves, which are cylinders, to something like Yeah. This. So I could sit here and nitpick this all day because there's, like, that's, you see how this, how nice that comes out? Yeah, it looks great. That's the top side. This is the bottom side. Um, excuse me. I should say that this is actually the way the pedal is. This is where your spindle or crank arm will be. Yeah or whatever, where it attaches to it. <laughs> this will be the outside. And it's a little rough, obviously, because your supports, but this is the side that's going to be slamming on the ground anyways. And if you really so, wanted to go crazy, you could, like, file and sand yep, you and can make sand it, it look legit. Yeah, there's I've tons I've seen. Of things. Yeah, you can paint them. What's cool about 3D printed stuff, too, is, like, you, you know how you can, like, see the layers and everything? Yeah. If you take the time to paint them, it's, uh... You'd never it even fills, know. It fills that layering. Yeah. It's smooth, dude. It's so sick. Yeah, I've seen stuff. Uh, Adam Savage's tested YouTube channel. Yeah. He does that. He does some 3D printed stuff, and it just looks incredible. Uh, secretly, I, I know that they're doing things with, like, Honda. And you know, like, the door, inside your doors, like, for impact? Mm. You know how it used to be, like, foam and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's all going to be 3D printed. Oh. Isn't that pretty cool? Because you know how, like, it can be hollow? Yeah. So they can do density settings right. on important areas and then less dense in other areas, and it's more eco-friendly than styrofoam. That's sick. So that was something that they're doing actually here in Columbus. So That's pretty rad. So before we get... Uh, Sorry, I licked all the glue off of it. <laughs> I wondered what you were doing. Like, what is happening? Uh, there's, your, there's, your, uh, there's your screen. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh well, I was going to ask about while we're in kind of like the mindless part of this where there's not yeah. much to say or just do. Uh, I mean, you've been posting about all this stuff on Instagram and and you've no doubt heard from people within the industry and stuff like about 3D printing and what you're doing. What's been the response? Uh, both. 
both negative and positive. So obviously some people are going to be bummed about it because they're just like, oh, you're taking money away from blah, blah, blah. And then the opposite is like people are like, oh, this is something that we can get ahead of. Which right. Is like, there's two different approaches to everything when new technology comes about. Either you can fucking stay in the past and argue that anybody who does the new thing is stupid and shout at the cloud like, rah, 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 yeah, the Simpson meme. Yeah. Or you can be like, hey, how can we make money off of this? How can we be a part of this? So, yeah, that's kind of like what I've gotten is a bunch of like either fucking people telling me that I'm ruining BMX or people who are really hyped on it. It's one or the other. And mountain bike dudes, <laughs> mountain bike dudes are like, it's so funny because BMX people are like, you're ruining the industry. And then the mountain bike dudes are like, I think I'll print some of these out for my son this <laughs> afternoon. You know what I mean? Because they're already f***ing like engineers and shit. Like, yeah, that's funny. Oh, uh, dude, it's, it's... I've had more people like from the mountain bike and fixed gear community like who were initially like, yo, this is a really great idea. Yeah. And the BMX riders were like, no, you're, you're ruining everything. Yeah, but I, what about like people who are actually within the industry working at companies that you've heard from? Is it more... I feel that it would be more positive than negative from them. Um, from them... I only have, yeah, I've heard some positive things, obviously, and I've had some, like, negative things from, like, shop owners who were really pissed about it. Yeah. But then I was just like, yo, why don't you just buy a 3D printer and then do what I said, like... Do what I'm doing. Rather than having it say us, them, you could have it say your bike shop, and then on the back, instead of having this, you could put your logo. Like, I'll even do that work for you if you Because you're not, you. I, we haven't said this yet, but you're not doing this f for money. You're putting, you're uploading this stuff so anyone can print it out have access to it yeah. yeah that's the that's the concept and then 3d printers aren't just great for like bike parts there's a million things like that you can make i mean there's literally over 8 million free files on thingiverse alone let alone what's on thangs.com with an a and then GrabCat. Mm. all those sites have millions of free files that you can download and print shit so this one's pretty clean i'm gonna do something a little extra because i am like ocd so where did I leave my micro blow torch? So what's cool about this filament is like you see how it's white from where it like broke off? Yeah. This stuff, hitting it with the torch, uh, you can see it instantly f***ing disappears. Oh, that's cool. Makes it look better. Yep. So that's just me being like a little bit OCD. I get it. I'm just trying to make it like look better. That's pretty sweet. So these right now are looking pretty good. Yeah, dude, that looks awesome. So what so is that? Got... Is that your left or your right? That is your left side pedal. And let's get the right done. And that's before and after. Yup. Pretty cool. All right, what are we doing now? We're back at the 3D printer. Where do we go? Okay, from here, we're going to go to our prepare. I'm going to scroll down. I have uh, preheat my PLA. I happen to run it at 210 Celsius on the nozzle. And the bed temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. So we got to wait for that to warm up. While it's doing so, we take our USB thumb drive thing with our micro SD, goes in this little tiny slot right underneath, put it in there. And it just automatically, or do you have to select the file? Yeah, so once that's inserted, I go to see where it says print. Yeah. I click print. I have a bunch of different designs I was doing and top pedal cap right there. Oh, cool. Click print. Now it's ready to go. Once it reaches the temperature, our bed here has got enough glue on it to well, it's like an arts and crafts table basically over here. Yeah, all that white so, glue. Yeah, I use a bunch of glue to make sure it sticks to the to the glass. And that's okay. it. So as soon as it's ready to go, it'll start going. Put a little strand across to make sure you can hear it. So we are at the point now we're ready to put them together. And these are all the components that you need. So what do we have here? Uh, so obviously the internal spindles. Yeah. Your two different size ball cups. This is your, we'll say nearest crank arm, furthest from crank arm. And then you have two, whatever the hell we're missing. Oh, there it is. Sorry. That's your internal Obviously, it's like what fits for the big, balls for the balls yeah. for the balls. And then that is your outside one that locks it together. 
Gotcha. And yeah. I would also suggest some uh, Park Tool Loctite. Park, Park tool. tool Thread Locker. Park Tool, that's right. Park Tool <laughs> Thread Locker. So what comes first? We gotta put in... The cups, the ball cups going first. And you, you can do all of them at once? And uh, this is interesting too. Go ahead. Yeah, so like this is your, your cup, essentially. So this fits in here, and it's gonna take a little coercion. Coercion, that's the word? Convincing? Sure. No, it's convincing. Persuasion. Persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta smash that son of a bitch in there. So well, what's interesting about this is that you have to take that into account and design that into your 3D model yep. for it to print and everything, which is pretty, yeah, it's okay. interesting. I mean, I, I can see the trial and error side of this stuff oh, yeah. because you have to get this right in order for it to work with the pre-made parts. Yeah. And you can tell there's still some like mild errors because this one, see how it's like, I'm going to have to hit that with a hammer to press yeah. it in this one. And there's also shrinkage and everything that goes into it too, so you'll have varying. Yeah. This one, I can push it in with my pinky. Right. So that may just be because of uh, shrinkage. It may be because design, bleh, somewhere in there. Yeah. So let's get this pressed in. What can I use? Oh, you got it. Boom! Using the same tool we used to take off, the nine mil. That was it. Oh, that's easy. Easy enough. Yeah, just to set it. Have you messed with sealed bearing pedals at all yet? If I had a pair, I would, because that would be so much easier. <laughs> I'll give you some. Instead of sitting here, because now I'm about to be like, all Yeah, right. so we literally have to take every individual or count out how many you need. Yeah, I and think then it's, put them uh, in there. it's 14 on this side and 12 on this side. Do you do it with the spindle in there? So it's, so this no, is you this can't. is my way of doing it that works the best, all right? I'm gonna take some grease. Yep. Because obviously those miserable little tiny ball bearings are the worst. And we need them to stay in their place. This is like, dude, you remember? We're old enough, dude. Packing your headset bearings. I actually never had lived that part. No, I'm, no. A, I'm the only old man over here. Yeah, no. So like all the FSA pig headsets, all the unsealed single piece bottom brackets. No, but I have done this before with pedals. Yeah. To yes. put because they get wobbly and when the bearings get dry of grease, you gotta yep. put more grease in yeah, there. Yeah, you can't WD forty them. You gotta go in there and put grease in them. Yep, Come I've back. done this with like actual sealed bearings too you, to make them. Yeah, better. same. I've done that. You know, it'd be sick as if you made these and it had a Zerk fitting on it. And just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pumped it full of grease. Okay, now here's me attempting to get fourteen of these little tiny pecker heads in there. Four. That's three. Or three. Dale Earnhardt, baby. <laughs> Damn, I should have my... I got a calendar over there that I just got. I should put that on the wall just for... Well, while you're counting these out, I'm going to come back over here. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to sit here and like, move my mind. Five, just for a second. Six. To save time and be efficient here, we have the, the caps printing at the same time. Eleven? It's ten. Oh, God, I think. Some I think. Gonna I'm going to keep gonna... you straight. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit over here and count them again. I think it's 14. I may be wrong. Uh, what is that? 10, 13. It's 13 here. There's like shit all over them. I don't know what the hell that is. There's some gross shit everywhere. I mean, so we've kind of talked about the, the BMX industry thing or whatever of this. I mean, when you really break it down though, like this is no different than how certain companies started by making their own stuff and taking it places and selling it like it's just that you're making it yourself yeah usually the people aren't making it themselves you know you're out you're getting another local company to make something or however you're doing it yeah and then you're selling it yeah i mean or like uh dk that started with a dad and he needed a stem for his kids that wasn't breaking profile, profile. look at profile yeah. and how profile started that's exactly there was a need in the market didn't supply the need so an individual so came Jim up with a Allie solution literally invented a system that we still use today yeah and that's all that is and then that's potentially even what we're seeing here is just a new a new system a new way to do things a new yeah I don't know, so you just greased up the spindle. This is the axle. easiest way I found to do it. Once you do the bottom cup, 
put a little grease on there to hold everything in, make it real nice. Make sure it's obviously this is the left side we're doing first here. And then I actually hold the spindle in place. Oh my God, I just had a moment of genius. You ready? Yes, we're inventing. Yo, this is real time. Yo, I might actually put the grease and put the bearings in and then drop it into place. Ooh. Instead of I trying mean... to drop the ball bearings in separate. It might flip and ruin my day, but we're gonna, we're gonna try something. We're new. gonna have faith that that's not gonna happen. <laughs> It probably will. But I don't think the bearings will fall out because there's enough grease in here. But this one's 12. The back ones, I don't know why they're different. But I'm sure that's something that somebody found out to save money on ball bearings too. Oh yeah, too much. Too, Literally too, too many. less per. Yep. So there's, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. And I mean, dude, when you get down into like companies stuff, like that's real, dude. Like, two bearings per pedal, four bearings per set. Yep. How many pedals oh come in God. a pallet? No, think about that. So dude. you're, and that's the stuff that people don't think about usually because they don't they don't understand the way business works. Yeah, and so they they have no idea that like when they're taking their pedal apart, how many ball bearings are even in there to begin yeah. with. No, and they don't think about like that those two ball bearings over a, a you know cargo container. You know what I'm saying? That like can that save, save some serious money. Yep. All right. Moment and not truth. decrease the strength or anything. You ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. That the was moment of sick. genius worked out. Yeah, that was risky. You're one yeah, for one on that one. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever do that again, but <laughs> that was cool. All right, now to struggle and bitch to get this in. Well, I'm holding it with my finger and tightening it down. This has nothing to do with the 3D printing side of things, but what you're doing right now a machine or someone or something has to do this on every single pedal that you buy. Yo, think about that too, right? Everything. It really makes you like more in touch with your bike and how everything works and understanding it. And you really realize the process and you're just like, wow, I just bought $12 pedals. And you think about the process that and like, had to go through to get that done. How much work you're even just putting in to put this together. Like if somebody is doing that in wherever they're being made. Yeah that's kind of it's understandable when the certain things cost what they do yeah all right and this is the permanent so so might have a hard time ever taking these apart when or if you do and where did we put that nine nine millimeter boom thread locker is definitely a way to go yeah where did you put that at just on the spindle on the inside. Ah, so that it doesn't come loose. Yep. Yeah, that's one thing that I've definitely experienced with pedals. Yeah, and it's better to, it's it's the way to go. Get the thread locker, do it right. Right. So other than this cap here, which is, There's two caps, or these caps, which is 67% done with eight minutes remaining. Cool. That pedal is done. So you that just gotta is ready to rock and repeat roll. the process with the next one. We will time lapse through that real quickly. Yeah. step that's all we have left yep that's it and we just got to put these in there we go all right so last thing caps caps what, what are, are we do doing them? right there <laughs> they're, they're right beside you okay cool that's pretty basic i mean these have like a tapered edge mm -hmm. so they literally just go in and you just push them. oh that's sick and that's that's simple yep that's it that's done that's a done pedal that is a done pedal same with this one. That's sick. There you go. So That's there's two it. complete pedals, and these are the pedals I'll be riding in a upcoming video. Is this the kind of thing that anybody could just get into? Yeah, I mean, so the software that I showed you, like even CAD, you can get Fusion 360 for a hobbyist for free. Yeah. You can get the Ultimaker Cura, which is your slicer app. That's for free. Mm-hmm. You need just a new enough PC or Macintosh to do 
uh, you know, to run those programs. If you have something newer than 2008, <laughs> like my <laughs> shit, you'll be fine. If you have the computer, obviously that would be an expenditure, right? Potential. The printers, um, they run anywhere between 270 to $330 for one of the printers. And filament costs anywhere from 25 to $30. Yeah. Obviously, there's more higher-end printers you can get. There's more higher-end filament you can get. You can get uh, full-grade professional Fusion 360. That's like $700 a year. You can go into that, but that's like the entry level is less than $500, and you can make your own bike parts with your friends. Yeah. And Or you can just... You think this is the future? I think with doing at-home stuff, I think it's amazing, but like on the grand scale like the big picture like being able to do things like things that are equivalent to injection molding and strength and being able to do it here in the states and doing made to order stuff like what's cool about this is if like you go to a manufacturer that does 3d printing you're like hey i want a hundred of these you get a hundred yeah you know what i mean you can minimize your overhead you can do made to order like you could be like hey we're selling these and people order them, and then you make how many orders you got. Yeah. So it, it eliminates waste, overhead. So that's why I think it's real sick. Not to mention uh, just being able to do things that injection molding can't. Because obviously we knew these were a design that they've tried to make, wanted to make for how many years. Yeah, and in the significance of what you're saying with the made-to-order and 100 count things yeah. is the mold prices. Mold prices, yeah. to open a mold over in Taiwan for a BMX pedal, you're talking at least 10 to 15 grand. And that's before, you know, like you finalize anything. Like you could get that pedal back and have it be wrong, have to change the mold. People ride the first v yeah. version and break them. So that's why something like this is so significant because you can just make it. And it's real world testing. Like that's, yeah. So not only like uh, you're looking at your mold, then you have a quantity order, a minimum order that you have to fill, like 2,000, right? Here, we just made these. This is a, a third version prototype that I've done in a few weeks. You know what I mean? Now you're going to be testing these, and then you can give input, which can I can then be like, hey, Brant says this is what messed up. It needs fixed. Mm -hmm. And then we can immediately change that and better the product without having to go through thousands of dollars months years even now of waiting to get it back this is instantaneous that's why i see a lot of advantages in this especially when it comes to doing ones on an industrial manufacturing scale that yeah. can produce products that are equivalent in strength and durability to traditional injection molding this is just an at-home enthusiast level yeah let alone what they can produce in like the facility here in columbus and what we talked about while the time lapse was going there was sealed bearings Sealed bearings would make this process way faster, way easier, and you're not going to get the problems of like we were, you had to take the one apart again because does there one extra bearing inside <laughs> yeah. it? So you just, I mean, you you know you've ridden a sealed bearing pedal before. It just feels better to be able to have a 3D printed pedal that just feels that way would be Yeah, and simple. that's why like, I mean, it's just one of the things that like this is what I have, so this is what I created. Yeah. Same with like... Uh, these I was concepts. just going to ask about this. The JCPC. Hold that a little higher. Right here. Obviously, this is like a hybrid between factory and 3D printed. Yeah, it's it's so cool the way that this could be. Yeah, so and like if Odyssey wanted to, they could they could download your thing first thing. <laughs> yeah, they literally could. <laughs> and like they it, could make that themselves. Yeah, they could put Gary Young's smiling face on the back of this. And that's an SVG on uh what's it called autodesk's fusion 360 you take a png file and you make it black and white and then you upload it as an svg and then you can make it into any 3d image you want you can put memes on here you can put lettering you and, can put... and this is a perfect example of how the bmx industry could use the idea of 3d printing here in the u.s to sell something that would work on something that people ride yeah and they can do you can do beta testing you can do small sample sizes you can do and that saves the company money you don't have to open a mold up for thousands of dollars on a risk, fingers crossed, hoping that it gets bought up and then it gets here in time to, because who knows, trends in BMX are so quick too. Like everybody's doing the crank arm pedal feeble stuff right now. So 
the concept with the uh, fifth peg idea, yeah. your bottom bracket guard that I was messing with, it's hot. It might not be. These might not be a thing. You know what I mean? Like, so that time is also important. Wasted time is money. So I don't know. I think it's something that could definitely be opened up. And the technology that's evolving, having more and more people have these in their homes, the, co the future, we were talking about titanium and aluminum printed stuff. Uh, at home desktop 3D CNC machines. You know what I mean? Like people just having a desktop CNC machine. Oh, yeah. hey, I need a piece for my car. Makes it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so much. Right now, to me, as a as somebody who's closing in on 40, like I like we were talking, I lived through Napster, dude. I yeah. lived through LimeWire when it was the first thing of pirated music and it was all out there on this one place where you could get it and download it. To me, this is that new frontier. All the new downloaded files, but they're actual tangible products that you can create. And and this isn't music that was created by big, you know, famous yeah. rock stars. This is you created this. This is random guy. In yeah, share where... it with a community of people so they can have it for themselves. Like, and it's and all you're doing is paying for the filament, the design, yeah. and knowing how to operate and use your machines. Like. The at home aspect of it might be something that, you know, in reality is like slow to adapt. Yeah. There are going to be people who would never want to do this, admittedly. They'd rather just buy the product. And that's fine because even those printers that are behind you, they're full open source. You can download every one of those pieces on that machine and print it. And like make the printer? And make, you can 3D print a 3D printer. Yeah. That, and it's like a joke, but you totally can because it's that's, all open source. It's cool. And to me, and they still make money. Because people obviously don't want to do that. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's so, to me, like, it's a combination of both. You, Like, dude, if there was a bike company right now, not only would it be so cool to rapid test products, you know what I mean? Like, where you're getting uh, a new pedal design instantly because your engineer created it, and then the riders are immediately testing it, but then you can sample source it to people who are 3D printing it, and people are like, oh, what about liability? Well, obviously, you know, you're building your own stuff that there could be. Well, a rider riding a sample pedal isn't yeah. the same thing as somebody buying a finished product. Exactly, right? So there's that knowledge of like, yes, I'm assuming the risk of building something myself and riding it. I know that I'm assuming the risk. Um, but that's just instantaneous. And like so much stuff, like when I did uh, all the peg sleeves, I just crowdsourced it. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, yo send me your pegs and I will send you in return peg sleeves. You pay to shipping and I pay it back. So it's essentially net zero for both of us. You know what I mean? You spent $10, I spent $10, but you got pegs. So actually you won, but I got to get that design, put it online so other people can share it, download it. We all win. Yeah, and then that's sick because then once that file's out there then, even if like I get a, if somebody really tries to hit me with like a cease and desist, cool, that file still exists. Then Ted over there is taking his thing, putting it on his thing of verse, and then uploading it to uh, another, like, grad cab or things. You know what I mean? Like, it's uploaded somewhere else. Like, it, you might take me down, but someone else is going to share it. You know what I mean? It's like a Hydra, dude. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah. once it's out there, once the file's created, but, yeah, it would be sick if there was a bike company that was, like, offering subscriptions. Like, what I do with the, the fun community. Mm-hmm. They have subscriptions to beta test and alpha test new products before they're released to the public. I would totally, I'd pay money to just be, oh, they got a new pedal design? Cool, let me print it and ride it. Like that That's would be so a sick. really cool concept. Right? Is like, there a way that they can make something print only so that you can't, like, take it? Uh, I mean, the only thing legally you could do is, what do you mean as far as, like, if they <laughs> release a If they a sent file, you a file, yeah. So I guess there could be an, an agreement that you yes. sign when you sign up for so, it. So in the fun community, <laughs> I'm just going to say that for YouTube's sake. Yeah. In the fun community, they have uh, like a Patreon, but there's a, a firewall, right? So you go to their website. It's like, hey, here's a design that we came up with. You want to download it? It comes up to a screen. You pay me. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like you got to pay for it. Then you can get that file and download it. Could you take that file and then put it somewhere for someone else to get? Yes, but there's also like a sense of etiquette. It's like an honor system. Yeah, but at the same time, I paid for that. Why would I pay for that file, right, that I now have on my computer and then put it online so someone else can get it for free? 
no, I don't like that idea. Mm -hmm. I paid for that. That was my money. So why am I going to give it for free? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, that's kind of a barrier there too. It's also an honor system. Yeah. You could totally be a dickhead and put it out there for free, but then like, I don't know, no one's ever going to, then what's going to happen is they're going to track your IP They'll block you, and then you won't have access to that dude's site or anything that he's releasing again. And kind of people, blacklist yourself yeah, from the community. Yeah, you'll blacklist yourself yeah. from the community then, and nobody wants to mess with you because it's like, yo, this dude's downloading all of our stuff and then giving out to other people for free. Yeah, interesting. So that's how it goes in the fun community, and they kind of that's their weeding out process of people trying to do that shit because instead you're supposed to embrace the designer and be like, yo, this is super sick, support it, print it work with it, give details back and forth. Everybody works to make the product better in the end. BMX could do the same thing because to me, like a computer, a computer is only intelligent as the input of information it's receiving. So a company is also the same. And if the only input you're getting is from like your engineers and your pro riders, which are important, don't get me wrong. At least before a product goes out there. Yeah. You should have product testing for normies, kids who are just like learning the first time how to bunny hop because the stresses that a professional rider puts on a bike and the way they fall and the way they like their weight is completely different than somebody who just started riding. So those forces, those stresses, you know what I mean? Like, it, and you could do that with like more open source downloadable designs that people could print and try because then, and I know there's other things too, because what if their machines suck? What if they're noobs to it? But that's kind of part of the well, process. Well, you can make them sign something too. Yeah, there's an agreement, a window pops up, do you agree to a, uh, what's it called, uh, a non-compete, you're not going to release this information, you're agreeing to... Like, NDA. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like something that's going to legally bind you to not, you're not responsible for injuries, not responsible for the product that is sucking, or you can't distribute it, anything involved in that, right? Like, And once again, there's so few of people who are doing this, I mean, there's not... There are quite a bit, at least even with like how many followers I have, I talk to about 25 people. Um, there are people who are doing it and all the ones who are, are enthusiasts about 3D printing and yeah. they're good at it. They're not just like run of the mill. But I mean, I was there too. I was a rookie at one point too and it takes time and you learn how to do it and then you get better and better until you get shit. Like, I mean, that's 3D printed. Like you can barely even see the layer lines. Like you have to be like, Right. You know what I mean? Like It's awesome. It's super sick. It takes 30 hours, but... <laughs> <laughs> the pedals are complete. Here they are. Yes, my bad. Future video coming with me riding these pedals. Lots of lip tricks, bashing them on pedal feeble stuff. Maybe some grinds if we go out and ride some street. Thank you, Zach. This is rad. I'm sick. Yeehaw. I'm stoked for it, and uh, I'm stoked for what this could kind of kickstart in the the community of bmx so look forward to that and also he talked about the fifth peg concept he's got a bunch of other 3d printed stuff on his bike we're gonna do a bike check now take a look at that so thanks for watching take a look at his wait is the thingiverse? thingiverse i'm gonna put all of that in the description but what exactly will what will i have in the description thingiverse <laughs> yeah we'll just that's a file where i upload all my designs so it's a free site where you can go download STLs. And if there's anyone out there who's printing and designing stuff as well and wants uh, the, the step files, which is essentially like your CAD, I'll send that to anybody too who can modify, create. Only thing I ask is that you show me and yeah. let me print it too. <laughs> there you go. Because if you, like we can all better these and make things better, that's all I'm trying to do is come up with the coolest product and have the most reach to anybody to have you know, print them and ride them. So, so all relevant info will be in the description below. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeehaw. <laughs>